Chapter 4 Max was packing her book bag for school when she heard a commotion down the street. She dropped her backpack and raced to the nearest dirt-smeared window to peer through a hole in the glass. She saw two police cars. Their roof bar lights were swirling. Even from four stories up, Max could hear snatches of orders crackling out of the cruiser's dashboard radio. Squatters, eviction, arrest, trespassing. Then she saw two officers, a man and a woman, escorting Mrs. Rabinbitz, a sweet widow who lived on the third floor, out of the building and toward their police car. Mrs. Rabinbitz's frumpy housecoat was flapping in the breeze, exposing her knee-high stockings. There are more squatters upstairs, said the female cop. We may need backup. On it, said a cop, casually leaning against one of the cruisers with a radio mic in his hand. He seemed to be the man in charge. Yeah, this is Alpha 350, he said matter-of-factly into his microphone. One suspect in custody, more in the building. Request backup. Max had heard enough. She raced down four flights of steep, switchback staircases and into the bright morning light. Excuse me, officer, she said, holding up a hand to shield her eyes from the sun. Might I have a word? What? Who are you, kid? asked the cop who seemed to be in charge. Max Einstein, sir. Like the egghead Einstein? The E equals MC squared guy? Max still didn't answer. Instead, she tried to keep the conversation focused and on point. She had learned long ago that it was hard to achieve your desired scientific outcome if you let your mind wander into tri trivialities. Why are you arresting Mrs. Rabinvitz? she asked, her voice strong and firm. Because, little Miss Einstein, your friend here is a squatter. She can't live in this building without paying rent. Neither can any of those other people upstairs, the police officer gave Max a menacing look. Neither can you, kid. Officer, if I may, are you familiar with the legal term adverse possession? Oh, so now you're a little lawyer? No, officer, I have not completed the necessary course of study, nor have I passed the New York State Bar Exam. However, I do know that adverse possession is the legal term for occupying someone else's property. When you do so, you obtain what are known as squatter's rights. In the state of New York, a person has to live on the property openly and without permission of the owner for a period of at least 10 uninterrupted years to be able to claim adverse possession. You telling me these folks have been squatting over Mr. Monk's stables for more than 10 years and he just now called us about it? No, I believe the squatters have only been in possession of this particular premises for six or seven months. I will have to check with Mr. Kennedy for specifics. Well, little Miss Einstein, six or seven months isn't 10 years. True. However, in New York City, the laws are different than they are in New York State. We have our own set of adverse possession laws, which you, of course, are sworn to uphold in New York. And in New York City, sir, a person is granted squatter's rights after just 30 days. The cop stared at Max with a blank expression on his face. She often had that effect on people. After 30 days, she continued, a New York City squatter has the right to continue living in a building until the actual owner, in this case, Mr. Sammy Monk, goes through the lengthy and, I am told, very expensive process of legal eviction. From my understanding, that can take up to a year, sometimes longer. The other police officers were now staring at the one holding the radio microphone, wondering what to do next. Two of them still had their hands gripped on Mrs. Rabinvitz's arms, waiting for orders. The officer in charge shook his head. Let her go. The other officers did. Mrs. Rabinvitz rubbed her arms where the police had been clutching them and hurried over to Max to give her a kiss. Thank you, dear, she whispered. You're welcome, Mrs. Rabinvitz. Glad I could be of assistance. I found a bagel with cream cheese yesterday. Want it? No, thank you, Mrs. Rabinvitz. I already ate breakfast. Good. It's the most important meal of the day. The frail widow scurried back into the stables. Hey, Einstein, said the lead cop. Yes, sir. What school do you go to? I want to send my son there.